got the Weaver and the Forgotten. And this is somebody that was an outcast that took care of the outcasts that lived on the perimeter of society, that lived very much on the fringes, but also somehow came into a skill that helped create unity among what may have been like the, the untidy, the unkept, the unwashed, what we would consider as homeless now. It's back then, there were still people that were... Um, outcasts, travelers, not seen to fit in society, seen to be on the fringe. You were more on the inside of the fringe than the outside, but you definitely were somebody that was a guardian of the liminal space, guardian of the forgotten people. We've also got this way where you had this thing of offering things, offering things, offering things. Uh, you, you were a trader of a sort that would offer and trade, offer and trade. You would make deals that were to your disadvantage a lot. So, um, you would, you would do an uneven trade to help a person out. You followed a very distinct path and you would follow somewhat of the birds. Your higher self was always fully serving, 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 but you would follow somewhat of the birds. I think you were a traveler. Like they used to call, they used to say, gypsy, but that's somehow seen as a slur now, but this is very much what I'm getting, this sense of, um, Travel following a migrate, migratory path. Definitely understanding um, the value of seeing those less fortunate than you, even though you weren't rich by any stretch. You, you um, helped. There's a strong connection, a strong sense of family connection for you. This is something that's super strong. The family, your family and another family traveled together quite a lot. There was a union of the families and this is a union through marriage. I'm not sure if this is your marriage that united the families, but two families at least traveling really, really strong. These two families have been together for generation after generation after generation traveling together. These two families have traveled together and served for generation after generation. Of, of, of the, the group that traveled, yours had a, a little bit more status within its own culture. It wasn't status within the rest of the culture. It wasn't like kings and queens. But because of the long bonds between these two families, it was understood. It, it feels like there could be a lot of um, Anglo-Euro, perhaps even a little bit of um, a Welsh influence going on. Big time celebrations, big time celebrations and coming of age now. These are the two families. I want to see about your wedding. This is asking me to look into your wedding. Look into the wedding. There's the celebration. It's asking me to look into the wedding. What do we need to know? Why is the trading of fabrics this is important and the creating and crafting of fabrics important? so meant to understand trade, so meant to understand how people would need just the simplest things, so meant to put um, signature type things in fabrics, signature type things that help mark certain occasions, certain events, and certain celebrations. Always, always lifting a glass. There was a touch of a little bit of too much lifting the glass going on, but big, big events going forward. Very, very balanced energy coming through. It looks like that you come through, and in, it took me a minute, but it does that you come through as a woman, but your husband was a little bit in his cups. So, but that's okay. It wasn't like, a, um, it was a little excessive, but it wasn't like um, all the really bad raging stereotypes of the alcoholic. No, it was more like the jovial drinker. Um, yeah. <laughs> What I'm getting is your husband was a little bit drunk on the wedding. That's what I'm getting. But, but I would think most of the people at the wedding in attendance were. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. Wild, wild. 
how you bring things forward, how you illuminate things. There's a certain place that you go to every year. There's like an island place that you go to. And it's a certain place that you go to when the time is right, when the water is at a certain level, you're able to go to this island place. You go just by yourself for a while. This is something you do every year. This is part of your travels, part of your routine, part of what you do. You let things be turned on their head. You go to this thing. You, it, the chips will fall where they fall while you're gone. And, you know, it's like... Um, it's okay if, if you're doing this for yourself and it's not going to change. You're, you're determined to do this every time. It helps you get really, really re-energized, revitalized, renewed. There's a restoration that comes. And again, we're getting um, something coming through that's really, really strong about the two families. That, and I'm getting that there is a group of individuals that are together throughout that are doing this, doing this, doing this. This is definitely between the liminal spaces, but better off than most. There's something about um, the story, the genealogy, and the history, and the oral tradition that's being told. And it, it's being told and stored um, sometimes in the blanket, sometimes in the weaving, sometimes in just drawing. But there's oral tradition that comes through very, very strong. Again, I'm getting Welsh, 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 but there's something, there's this period of time, and again, this reference to the liminal space. This is something that um, wasn't done in a huge, 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 crazy way that everyone would see, and like, um, they would say, oh, she's magical, oh, she's a witch, oh, blah, 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 but you, you were. The effect that you had was big. You were very open to what would be spiritual gifts. You, you did it very, very connected with nature. It was like easy, easy connected. And it didn't feel like a huge sacrifice for you to be the traveling, the traveling, where other people might have traveled and traveled and hated it and felt like they never had a home or that they themselves were homeless. For you, it just felt as as the seasons changed and where your dwelling space would be and change, it seemed very, very natural for you. That's how it would go over and over. Well, let's see what else you I want you to look into you, you, your kids, your family right now. I think you had four or five kids. Did you have five? Yes. I wanted to look in your kids. I saw this here, and I'm thinking perhaps that it is that you had four kids, but no, it's that you had five. It's that you had five. Why am I only seeing four very visibly? What's with the fifth? I'm wondering if there was a miscarriage or if there was an unexpected surprise kid later in life. It's one or the other, and I'm not sure which. It's an unexpected surprise kid later in life. This is the baby that surprises you. You think you're done with having babies, but this is the baby that surprises you. Most like you, a different color of eyes. It's like a recessive gene in the family. Also comes through affirming. This is the one that would have the gifts that you have as well. This is the one that you would teach. This is a girl child coming through. I think you have three boys and two girls. I think the oldest is a boy. And the baby, the unexpected one, is a girl. I don't know the order of the others. This one is your favorite. And you're pretty clear about it. And everybody knows. Everybody knows she's the baby. She's the favorite. But it's because you guys had thought that you were done. And it was such a surprise. And at first you were not excited about it. This is you going out and saying, okay, you'll, you're going to surrender your will and let this come through. If this is meant to happen, it will come through. I think it was a difficult pregnancy for you. It slowed you down. You weren't able to travel as much as what you wanted to travel as what you had been traveling. And because you have the life of a traveler, it's not like it's easy and convenient to get to things. But you know most things pretty well. It's not like you hadn't helped other women in their situations have babies or whatnot. You would have been able to help with that and see it from the other end. But um, because it caught you off guard... At first, you were a little bit reluctant, but you did surrender to it. That's very interesting and beautiful. P 
powerful, powerful gifting with this one. This is something that is coming through and it's also something that's been in a few generations back. You're getting shades of um, a great aunt coming through, somebody that was a great aunt to you in this time period. You're getting shades of her that are letting you know that this child will be like that. Very interesting. You're watching the, the, the flora and fauna a lot because you're having to stay put. I think you catch something a little bit differently. You learn something a little bit differently because you're stuck for a season a little longer than what you thought. I think this is a summer baby. There's a restlessness within your sons. They're wanting to go, wanting to go, wanting to go. And some of them are wanting to go and be a little bit more traditional. Some of them are wanting to go and have more of a traditional life and not the traveler's life. Two of them are really, really wanting to be more stayed and stay put. And it makes you sad because you know that that's not the life that is going to be. You won't have them with your with your group as often. And there's absolute defiance in one of them about this. You do not want them to go. You would rather have them stay. You can't force them to stay, but you would rather have them stay. I think your husband sees that they need to be their own men. Your husband's telling you they each have their own things to offer. They're bringing their own offering to the world. If you're allowed to bring your offering to the world, then why aren't your children allowed to chart their own stars, so to speak, a little bit? And you know actually that they are. You know that they are. It's, it's during this um, season where there is a little bit of stuckness because of things as they are. It's during this season that um, this is coming up as an issue. It's the youngest one wanting to confront things to go forward. The youngest boy, not your youngest child. The youngest child, again, is the daughter. But it's the youngest boy that's going to have a tough time with this. Because if the two brothers go off, do you ask them to wait? You ask them to wait and travel with you for one more season, and they, they say, yeah. They finish out one more season with you, one more season. But you know that they're going to return and stay stable in what would be more like a city or a town. Their joy is in stability. It comes up plain as day, like written, boom, yeah. So this summer, I think you have this child... They won't know this child very well, the, the two that go. The rest of them will. But you'll travel through, travel through. They, You have the child in the summer. They'll go through the fall, but in the winter, they return to wherever is the city. It's going to be very different. This is like um, a, a learning to surrender, a learning for the trade-off, learning to allow growth to be what it will be is huge for you on this. And the commitment to the, the traveling group is still quite large, huge, huge. Allowing it to be what it will be, absolutely. There's some of the ways that you would like your boys that are setting up um, house in the city to be. And there's some of the things that you do. There's certain kinds of trees they'll plant to let you know when they're in flower season, they'll know to expect you. They'll know that this is the seasons and the change. They know that they will defend the perimeter. They'll know they'll hold their own. They're, they're meant to make their own way, and you know they'll hold their own. You know you taught them. You'll check in on them when and how you can, but it's just a difficult thing to do, very difficult thing to do. Anything else? This um, break away from the family was significant to you. It, it, it about broke your heart. Yeah. Because it is scary. It did have you have a lot of fear about that. For them to go on their own 
quest, so to speak. It's what they had to do, and it has to do with the flow. It has to do with the flow, and it's like, okay, this is how you're going to do it. This is how you're going to do it. it. You gave them certain things, certain formulas and things to keep them healthy and well. You, you gave certain knowledge, imparted certain knowledge about foods and drinks to keep them healthy and well. Then you had to go, you had to go, you had to go. This is where it stops. This is where it, this is where it stops. You had to go. There were lessons to teach the youngest. There were lessons for the youngest boy and there were lessons for your oldest daughter that were still to be completed and different roles and responsibilities that were taken on after this had happened. It changed the family dynamic a little bit, but still you traveled because you were meant to travel. That's what I've got, that's complete. Wow, yeah, that's what comes through. You, you continue your course as the traveler. It, that, that was the biggest heartache for you, though, was the boys, the, the boys that um, didn't want to be travelers. Huh. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, 